Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Fish Door County TV. This week we've got a really cool show lined up for you as I'm heading out with the Wisconsin DNR aboard the fisheries vessel Corgonist to do trawling surveys for young of the year yellow perch. Now these surveys are a valuable tool for the DNR as they use them to determine the population numbers and the overall health of the perch fishery on the Bay of Green Bay. Along with these trawling surveys, we're going to talk with fisheries biologist Tammy Paoli and she's going to give us an update and some more information on the cormorant numbers and the control efforts taking place right now in order to control some of the numbers of these birds on the lower bay as well as in the northern Door County area. Stay tuned, we've got a great show lined up with some really cool footage. We'll be back in about one minute. Out today we're going to do some yellow perch trawling surveys. We've been doing these surveys since the late 1970s and we use a what's called a semi-balloon otter trawl. It, it's a basically a large net that gets dragged along the bottom. You'll see some large wooden doors that essentially hold the net down on the bottom and and keep it open as it's sweeping along the bottom and collecting fish in the in the lower um, meter or two of water. And we get pretty much anything that, that you would typically see in the bay. We don't often see very many large game fish. Game fish tend to swim away and avoid the net rather quickly. The, um, but what we're after are the young of the year yellow perch, which are about three to four inches at this time. So that's one of the things that we'll be doing today is trying to get a handle on the, this year's year class of yellow perch. Hopefully we'll get a good number of those today. starting waypoints that we have programmed up into the, um, the GPS unit up front and Tim will be driving to the point and he'll be letting the guys know when we're getting close and, and to start letting the net out. He has to time it so that by the time the net hits the bottom and the doors are out completely that we're pretty much right on site. So it takes a lot of practice to, to get that timing down. Um, so once once he says, okay, let it out, they'll start letting it out. The amount of cable or warp that's, that's let out at each of these sites is dependent on the depth of the site. 
All the sites we'll be doing today, there'll be 50 feet of wharf left out um, because we'll be in probably eight to 10 feet of water. And we, when, obviously when we go in deeper sites, we let more wharf out in those areas to get a, a ratio for the, the water depth. So once the net is out and it hits the bottom and the hydraulics are turned off and the cable's all out, then I start a timer. We, I start a timer for five minutes and we tow at a speed of about 2.8 knots, which is actually fairly slow. It almost sometimes doesn't feel like you're moving much at all. Then when the five minutes is up, up come the doors, up come the net, and we open up the net, see what we have, open it up on the back table, and start counting some fish. And we'll be collecting some samples for Dr. John Jansen from UW-Milwaukee Water Institute today. Um, he's got a list of a variety of fish species that he's interested in having us collect at, a ver at some various sites that we're doing. And um, so we'll be collecting fish for him. We'll be, uh, we'll be counting everything. We'll be collecting and keeping uh, up to 100 young of the year yellow perch that we'll later measure later on today. Any fish, any yellow perch that are larger that than young of the year, yearling or older, we'll be keeping because we'll be collecting some information on those as well. quarters of the way done with our surveys this year so far and from the indications that I've seen so far it's looking like another strong year class. We had some really good numbers of young of the year perch up by our sites by Pensaki, the mouth of the Pensaki River. We also had good good numbers of young of the year perch up by Little River up off of Marinette and so this it, all indications are that we're gonna have we're in for another strong year class um, generally, we've had, recent years we've had numbers of young of the year perch from 1,000 to 2,000 per hour. So one, because we're doing five minute tows, this gets all converted to the number of perch per trawl hour. So anything from 1,000 to 2,000 per trawl hour is, is probably what I would expect we would have for this year. There, our record year class was 2003, and that's when we had around 8,000 yellow perch per trial hour. So anything over 1,000 I would be happy with. Well, that was some really great information on the trawling surveys for Young of the Year perch, 
And it's kind of an interesting process that they go through to try to determine the perch numbers on the bay. As we all know, it's a difficult, it's a difficult venue and a difficult process, of course. Uh, the other thing that Tammy talked to us about today, and this is an important aspect for the bay, especially for the sport fishermen, and that's the cormorant numbers. We all know that there's a lot of cormorant and pelican numbers in the lower bay, as well as northern Door County right now. And she took some time to discuss the population of those birds, what's being done to control the numbers, and a little bit of the history of the cormorant as well. In the 1980s, the perch population was, was really high. It was um, kind of a monoculture of yellow perch. In the 1990s and early 2000s, that population really plummeted um, for a variety of reasons, um, one of which is suspected to be problems with recruitment. However, in the early 2000s, then, the population started to rebound. 1998 was a very good year class. But 2003 was the record year class that we have, that, that we know about. And ever since 2003, we've had what I would consider a very strong year classes. So right now, recruitment is not a problem, but they're just not materializing into the adult population. And we think that there's some issues with top-down predation coming from things like cormorants, pelicans, walleyes, you know, other predators that might be out there. Before 2006, there was no control efforts done for cormorants. And the history of cormorants is in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. Um, their numbers were way down. Populations were, were almost extinct in Wisconsin due to problems with, with DDT and, and eggshell thinning that caused these birds to not be able to reproduce successfully. In the late 1970s and early 80s, their numbers started to come back slowly. However, in the late 1990s and early 2000s, their numbers really started to grow exponentially to the point where they, they started to become a problem for people that are concerned that they're eating too many fish. So. We, we were able to work with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and um, USDA Wildlife Services, APHIS, to do some control efforts on these islands. So what happens in the spring is several times from the middle of April through the early part of June is a crew from USDA Wildlife Services comes out to these islands and they they spray corn oil on the eggs that have already been laid by the adult birds. And the purpose of the corn oil is it suffocates the pores of the eggs and prevents that egg from de developing, but it tricks the adult birds into thinking that there's still a viable egg on the nest. So instead of relaying new eggs, they'll continue to sit on these eggs that, that won't hatch. In addition to this egg oiling, I mentioned we've also been doing some removal of adult birds as well. And cormorants can live, in many cases, 30 years or more in the wild. So they're, they're quite a long-lived species. So it's, it really does take quite a bit of time of egg oiling and removal of, of some adults to really see um, a good dent in that population. There have been estimates that a cormorant can eat up to a pound of fish per day and there was a diet study that was done down here in the southern part of Green Bay in 2004 and 2005 um, where adult birds were shot and the stomachs were looked at to see what they actually were eating. The bulk of the, the diet just happened to be yellow perch in 2004. Now recall that 2003 was our record year class for yellow perch so there just happened to be a lot of four to five inch yellow perch around in 2004 and that's what a lot of these these birds were eating at that time. The following year in 2005 the yellow perch still comprised a good portion of cormorants diet however the majority of their diets at that following year was were things like gizzard shad and trout perch. So. Um, cormorants are opportunistic feeders, so they're going to eat whatever is most abundant. And so one of the concerns is not only the direct effects that they might have on yellow perch and consuming yellow perch, but also the indirect effects. So if they're not eating yellow perch, they might be eating other forage fish species that is 
also affecting yellow perch indirectly. So it's, it's having an overall um, predation effect on the, on, the whole, on the food chain as a whole. Now the overall population of cormorants in all of Green Bay, this includes the Cat Island, um, two islands down here, as well as some of the islands like Hat and Jack up in Northern Door County and some of the other islands, Pi Pilot, Spider, Hog, and a few others up in, around the other side of the Door Peninsula. The highest numbers were at just over 15,000 nests in 2009. And these numbers have been climbing ever since the, the, um, the late 1980s. So it, the numbers are going up and up and up until for the first time last year in 2011 when the nest counts were done for all of these islands, we finally saw a decrease. So we we're at about 12,000 cormorant pairs, so nests, so for those entire islands. So you have to multiply that times two because you have a male and female um, for each of these. So we're finally starting to see some effect on the population due to the control efforts. done today and we got pretty much what I would have expected nothing really earth-shattering or out of the ordinary um, we actually did get some better numbers of young of the year perch at the Green Bay entrance Lake deep sites and we got a had a variety of fish species there big variety more than we would typically have um, from past years um, we got a large number of alewife young of the year and these are these fish are about one inch long at this time um, so it appears as if the 2012 year class for alewives is a is a very good year class because in the I've been doing this for five years now and this might be the first time that I've seen alewives in those numbers small ones in some of these sites in the southern bay here today so that's um, good news for people who are interested in trout and salmon fishing. Well guys, that was some more great information from the Wisconsin DNR as always. And you know, we really enjoy doing these shows because it kind of shows a behind the scenes look at all that goes into determining bag limits and fish numbers and total populations and all the other stuff on the bay for fisheries management. And a lot of times you hear people talking and they give one opinion one way or the other. But the one thing we do know is that the DNR takes a lot of time and puts a lot of effort into trying to make the best fishery possible, whether it's yellow perch, from bass to muskies to walleyes and everything in between. So thanks again to Wisconsin DNR and we hope everyone enjoyed the show. Be sure to join us next week for another great episode of Fish Door County TV.